hey hey hani lo prem dhana khoru na prachu khoru na prachu Hey-ho, Prabhu, Kota, Gela, Acharya, Thakku. Jaya Vaishnav Thakur. Vaishnav Thakur, Vaishnav Thakur, Jaya Vaishnav Thakur. Jaya Vaishnav Thakur, Vaishnav Thakur, Vaishnav Thakur, Vaishnav Thakur. Jaya Vrindavan Das Thakur, Vrindavan Das Thakur, Vrindavan Das Thakur, Jai Vrindavan Das Thakur. Vrindavan Das Thakur, Jaya Vrindavan, Hari Bhav, Hari Bhav, Hari Bhav, Gaur Hari Bhav. Hittai Gaur Hari Bhav, Hari Bhav, Hari Bhav, Hari Bhav, Hari Bhav. He who has brought the treasure of divine love and was filled with compassion and mercy. Where has such a personality as Srinivas Acharya gone? Where are my Sarup Damodar and Rupa Goswami? Where is Sanatan? Where is Raghunath Das, the savior of the fallen? Where are my Raghunath Bhatta and Gopal Bhatta? And where is Krishna Das Kaviraj? Where did Lord Gauranga, the great dancer, suddenly go? I will smash my head against the rock and enter into the fire. Where will I find Lord Garanga, the reservoir of all wonderful qualities? Being unable to obtain the association of Lord Garanga, accompanied by all of these devotees, in whose associate he performed his pastimes, Naratam Das simply weeps. Vrindavan Das Thakur Ki Jai. Omagyan Timirandasya Genajana Salakaya. Chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri, guru vena maha. Shri chaitanya mano bistam staptitam yena bhutale. Swayam rupa kadam mayam dadati swapadantikam. Maum vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale. Shri makti vakti vedanta swami tinamine. Namaste saraswati deve gauravani pacharine. Nirvishesha sunyavadhi pasyatya de satarine. Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nitananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So today is the uh, disappearance day of the Veda Vyas of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, Sri Vrindavan Das Thakur. There's not a lot known about him, but what is known is quite interesting. We'll begin by reading one verse from the Gauragona Deshti Pika. Verse 109, Gauragona Pika gives us an understanding of who in Krishna's pastimes 
and who they were in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. So here, Veda Vyasa Yat Eva Sit Daso Vrindavano Duna Saka Yad Kushama Pida Karyatas Tam Samavisat Veda Vyas, the author of the Vedas, became Vrindavan Das Thakur. Krishna's friends, Kusuma Pida, also entered into him for the sake of the Lord's pastimes. Hmm. So two personalities in one have become Vrindavan Das Thakur. Mainly he is Veda Vyas, who again appeared to record the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. Here, well, it says, Veda Vyas described Krishna Lila in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Non different from Vyas, Vrindavan Das Thakur described Mahaprabhu's Lila in Chaitanya Bhagavat. His book was first called Chaitanya Mangala, but when, when Lochan Das later gave the same name to his biography of the Lord, it was changed to Chaitanya Bhagavat. <laughs> Vrindavan Das Thakur's mother, uh, she was born in the month of Vishakha in the year 1429, which is 1507 A.D. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Vrindavan Das Thakur was born in 1507. His mother was Naraini. He was born in Mamgachi, which is not too far from our Mandir in, uh, in uh, Navadweep in uh, Mayapur. Um, some people say he was born in Kormahata, but those of you who have been on the Vrindavan Navadweep, I mean the Navadweep Mandala Parikram, know that uh, that in Mamgachi there is a house which is known as the house where he was born and lived for many years there's a beautiful set of Gornitai deities that are worshipped by him. And many of his ancestors coming in his line still live in that place. Narayani was his mother. His father was Vaikuntha Nath Vipra. They came from East Bengal, from a place called Shailet. <laughs> and uh, Narayani, his, she's a daughter of the oldest brother, of Srivas Thakur. Srivas Thakur, we always hear he had three other brothers, Sri Ram, Sri Nidhi, and Sri Pati. And then it was Srivas, but then there's another brother called Nalila, Nan, Nanlina Kanta, who was the older brother of Srivas. He was the oldest of all the five brothers. And uh, he actually left the world quite early. And he is the uh, the actual father of Vrindavan Das Thakur. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. He is the father of Vrindavan Das Thakur's mother, sorry, Narayani. Mm -hmm. Narayani got the special me mercy of Lord Chaitanya. It says, Kilimbika, who used to eat Krishna's remnants, was the younger sister of Krishna's nurse, Ambika. Srivas Thakur's wife, Malini, was Ambika. And then his niece became Narayani. And nurse and younger sister appeared in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes as Narayani. Narayani was special. She got the special mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when she was just a little girl. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was performing his pastimes in uh, Srivas Thakur's house. And this was the Maha Prakash Leela. The 21 hours where Lord Chaitanya assumed the mood of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and was accepting worship from all his devotees. That is a beautiful, beautiful narration in both the Chaitanya Charitamrita and in Chaitanya Bhagwat. Mostly in Chaitanya Bhagwat you can find it. And uh, in there, it describes how Lord Chaitanya uh, 
caused little Narayani, she was only a four-year-old girl, uh, to go into ecstasy simply by him saying, Narayani, cry for Krishna, cry for Krishna. And she started crying and rolling on the ground in ecstasy. She had received the special mercy of Lord Chaitanya's personal remnants given to her by the Lord himself. <laughs> so that same Narayani, who appeared in Krishna's pastimes as the younger sister of Krishna's nurse, Ambika, became the mother of Vrindavan Das Thakur. We'll just divert a second into more contemporary history. Uh, His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada, when he began the movement, he was deciding whether to give the devotees the the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, his life in the form of, of uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur's uh, Chaitanya Bhagwat or Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami's Chaitanya Charitamrita. And then he considered that his spiritual master had written a commentary on Vrindavan Das Thakur's book, uh, Chaitanya Bhagwat. So it's the etiquette of you know, the disciple of the spiritual master not to try to outdo one spiritual master in performing something more literarily accepted or to compete with one spiritual master. So Prabhupada thought best to uh, present the devotees the teachings of Lord Chaitanya and his life example. Uh, from Chaitanya Charita Rita Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami's book. And Vrindavan Das Thakur's book is full of Krishna, uh, Lord Chaitanya's leelas. But we find in uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami's narration, it is also full of leela, but a lot of philosophy with reference to verses coming from other scriptures, particularly Srimad Bhagavatam. So Prabhupada wanted to support the uh, understanding of Leela with tattva. And there's a lot of tattva, in, more, more so in uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami's Chaitanya Charitamrita. Vrindavan Das Thakur is just writing practically straight, pure Gaur Leela. Hmm. Um, but he's considered the father or the person who is known as the author of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, he also refers to um, that. And he says in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Vrindavan Das Thakur, the son of Narayani, wrote the Chaitanya Mangala, Chaitanya Bhagavat, Veda Vyas describes Krishna's life in the Srimad Bhagavatam and Vrindavan Das Thakur is the Vyas of Chaitanya Leela. That's from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Um, uh, Lord uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur took initiation from Lord Nityananda and therefore we find when we read the uh, pastimes of Lord Chaitanya and Chaitanya Bhagwat, we find their whole chapters dedicated to Lord Nityananda. And a lot more is mentioned in Chaitanya Bhagwat than in Chaitanya Charitamrita about Lord Nityananda. Well, it's just natural because being the, the disciple of one spiritual master, one wants to glorify their spiritual master. Of course, in this case, the spiritual master is also the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So he spent... Therefore, we find that a lot of the later pastimes of Lord Chaitanya's Leela, his Ancha Leela, when he was spending time in Jagannath Puri, um, those later pastimes, when the Lord was more into an internal mood of experiencing uh, love of Krishna as a devotee of the Lord. Those are not included in Chaitanya Bhagavat, but you'll find them mentioned extensively in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Mm -hmm. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is very chaste to the previous Acharya, Vrindavan Das Thakur, 
And he mentions in some of his verses that he's not trying to, uh, you know, increase the volume of his book by mentioning everything that Vrindavan Das Thakur. But he does take a few of the pastimes, many of them actually, and expands on a few of the pastimes that uh, Lord Ch that Vrindavan Das Thakur just briefly mentions. One of the most amazing pastimes in Chaitanya Bhagavat, which is 745 verses, is uh, Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan on the house of Chankazi. It is also mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita, but in a more, you know, uh, what we say, concise form. But in Chaitanya Bhagavat, that pastime expands itself for many, many, many verses. And uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur really goes into the details of what happened that night when Lord Chaitanya organized uh, two lakhs of devotees. Two lakhs of devotees is 200,000. A lakh is 100,000. So he organized 200,000 devotees to march on the palace of uh, Chankazi after Chankazi had made an ordinance not to have Sankirtan anymore. The Lord perform, performed this amazing pastime. It says that there were so many devotees they couldn't even see the end of the lines. They all lit torches. And it said this pastime was performed in the evening when it was dark. But everybody had a torch lit. And so it looked like the sun had risen. Everything was so bright from the lighting of the torches. It practically unchanged the whole environment. So Lord Chaitanya was very much uh, angry about uh, the uh, injunction that the uh, Kazi had made to stop Sankirtan. And therefore he wanted to prove that I've come to perform this Sankirtan for the benefit of the whole world and this is my pastime. So that that pastime is nicely described in Vrindavan Das Thakur's Chaitanya Bhagavat. If you get a chance, please read it. It's very absorbing. <laughs> All the details of that amazing pastime. Um, we hear a little bit about Vrindavan Das Thakur. Um, it says here, Vrindavan Das Thakur is the authorized biographer of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, and he is equal to Srila Vyasadeva. He has described the Lord's pastimes in such a way that they become sweeter and sweeter. He was afraid of exceedingly enlarging his book, and so he left some parts of Mahaprabhu's life untold. I shall try as far as possible to fill in these empty spaces. And that's also spoken by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, who wrote Chaitanya Charitamrita when he was 95 years old. When he was commissioned by the devotees to do the work, he said, I can barely see, and my hand is shaking. You know, from old age, he was shaking. Uh, but he went before the deity of Madan Mohan, he prayed to the deity, Jayatam Sudatom Pangor, Mamamanda Matir Gati, Matsarvasya Padam Bojo, Radha Madhava Mohano. He prayed to Shisi uh, Radha Madan Mohan. And while he was praying, the Pujari came up, out, took the garland off the deity, and presented it to Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. <laughs> So at that point, he understood, yes, he had received the blessings of Madan Mohan, and he proceeded on with his work. This is also very instructive, that whenever we're going to do some significant activity in devotional service, of course, just in general, everything is significant, but say something a little bit on a, where there's a, a life-changing experience, one should definitely seek the blessings, mercy of both the Lord and the Lord's pure devotees. 
And that way one can uh, feel confident that is by their mercy, I'm simply acting. And therefore it will become successful automatically. Vrindavan Das Thakur criticized those who offend Vaishnavas. He's very strong about that. He writes, I'll read it in the Bengali, Ekta parihara ohi je papi nindakare tabalate marung ta sisarega upare. If someone still blasphemes the Vaishnavas, even after being told how objectionable it is, I shall kick him in the head. <laughs> These words are repeated several times times throughout the Chaitanya Bhagavat. <laughs> Some foolish and arrogant persons misunderstand such statements and criticize Vrindavan Das Thakur for making such statements. Such criticism leads them to be mirrored in the bog of Vaishnav Aparad. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, the founder of Sri Chaitanya Math, and all the Gaudiyamas are well worth studying. I am really, I am ready to kick the heads of those envious and hellish persons who blaspheme Nityananda Prabhu. If by doing so I will be able to forever prevent them from repeating their attempts to show disrespect to the Supreme Lord. Not only that, but if by doing so I can bring about a clear conception of the truth, I will be performing them the greatest service. <laughs> So here uh, we see sometimes it was, you'll find in the readings of the pastimes of the Lord, many times those who had association with or even saw Lord Nityananda had a very difficult time understanding him. <laughs> Lord Nityananda is called Avadut, <laughs> that is one of his names. That means he follows no rules, no regulations. But because he's on the highest transcendental platform, he is the Supreme Lord himself playing the role of his own devotee. Whatever he does is perfect. But those who are seeing him in a different way sometimes find fault with him. There's also one pastime where one devotee was finding fault with Lord Nityananda. Another devotee became very angry with him and uh, and to often show his anger, he used to carry a flute with him, and he broke his flute and went away. And as soon as that happened, actually it was the brother of, Krish of Krishna Das Gaviraj Goswami who was finding fault with Lord Nityananda. Krishna Das Gaviraj Goswami makes the statement, after that my brother fell down. So... Um, yeah, so that's uh, a very, uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is always transcendental to whatever happens. Therefore, one should, if one doesn't understand, they should try to understand and not find fault. So here, it says that anyone who finds fault with devotees, Lord Chaitanya will not give his mercy. He says, I give my mercy to anyone, full mercy, he says full mercy, not just mercy, but that mercy which is complete, for anyone who develops a taste for chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and doesn't find fault with the devotees or with others. He says, one should become a dosha darshi, Dosha means false, and Adarshi, Darshi means to see. Adarshi means doesn't see, one who doesn't see the faults of others. So how do we live in this world? And we come in contact with people who we, have, we notice have faults. Well, the idea is to replace that thought or even the desire to speak about it with glorification of that devotee. Uh, everyone has good qualities, 
everyone has faults. Look for the good qualities, neglect and forget about the faults, and then your mind will always be happy and you'll be able to execute devotional service very nicely. As Lord Chaitanya said, anyone who blasphemes the devotees, they drink uh, poison, and because they drink poison, they die. Anyone who glorifies the devotees, they drink nectar, and because they drink nectar, they live eternally. <laughs> so here's a little instruction. So when we feel, find ourselves uh, in that situation, always look for the good qualities like that. A person's faults are not so important. Better to just overlook them. And a lot of times, what we're seeing is our own fault reflected through the lives of others. A lot of times others are mirrors for our own uh, faults and therefore sometimes we actually see what we are through another person. And it's not so much about them, it also it's about our own consciousness. <laughs> So today is uh, Vrindavan, and of course it says that that anyone who gets the dust of the lotus feet of Vrindavan Dastakur on their head, then they, they receive the greatest benediction. So here it says, uh, although he's punishing, wants to punish the enemies of the Lord who criticize the Lord, and in fact he harbors a compassionate attitude to them that, towards them that knows no limit. So by actually speaking like that, he's actually showing compassion to those who are critics. <laughs> and hopefully they will rectify that anomaly. Vrindavan Das Thakur's disappearance day is today, which is Krishna Dasami of the month of Vishaka. Uh, and he disappeared in the year 1589. Lord Chaitanya left in the year 1534. So he lived about 55 years after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya. He was born in 1507. So he lived to the age of 81. So this is a little bit about the life of Vrindavan Das Thakur. There's not many accounts. Uh, if you search around, you might find a few other details about his life. But generally, his life remains somewhat of an enigma. Um, you don't find much written anywhere about the life of Vrindavan Das Thakur. Only this little bit we have that we narrated tonight. But we can understand he was a great personality uh, who took birth. He's actually Beta Vyas himself. Simply, the Lord arranged for him to come into this Leela so he could write in the glories of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is to our benefit, of course. So we have three books. There are many. There are actually more than three, but three main books. Vrindavan Das Thakur's Chaitanya Bhagavat, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami's Chaitanya Charitamrita, and Lochan Das Thakur's Chaitanya Mangala, which is not very long, but very interesting, because in Chaitanya Mangala, there are certain pastimes of the Lord he expands upon really, really long. And he also gives the prelude to the appearance of Lord Chaitanya, how Krishna desired to come in that form as Lord Chaitanya in order to experience his the position of Srimati Radharani. So that's nice in Blochantasta Kurs Chaitanya Mangala. For those of you who like weddings and marriages, <laughs> we find that in Chaitanya Mangala the very elaborate description of Lord Chaitanya's marriage to Vishnu Priya is given much, much uh, attention page after page after page with details of that, wherein Krishna Das Kaviraj and I think Vrindavan Das Thakur just mentions it. They touch on a few points. But in Chaitanya Mangala, yeah, the whole wedding ceremony is 
laid out really nicely. So between these three authors, we have an ocean of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Uh, not only an ocean, an unlimited ocean. So Chaitanya Leela, Krishna Leela, no difference. The only difference is that there is a slight added element of mercy in Chaitanya Leela, Gaur Leela, because Lord Chaitanya is appearing in this age of Kali Yuga and people are not very qualified, so he's giving extra mercy, a little bit more mercy than Krishna in the form of Sri Harinam Sankirtan, which is the ultimate principle of mercy. Okay, so these are some things we can think about. And I know the day is practically at the end, but if you have some time in the evening, maybe you can read Chaitanya Bhagwat if you have a copy. Uh, those pastimes of Lord Nityananda, Lord Chaitanya, are so sweetly and so very, very deeply uh, explored in Chaitanya Bhagwat. It's a, quite an amazing book. And if you can find the the ones with the commentaries with Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, uh, he gives a very nice commentary on Lord Chaitanya's pastime of going to East Bengal when after, just after he got married to his wife uh, Lakshmi Priya, Lord Chaitanya was married first to Lakshmi Priya and then to Vishnu Priya. But when he was gone, Lakshmi Priya was bitten by the snake of separation and left the body. So his mother had arranged that marriage. Now his mother was concerned. She had, she had lost her daughter-in-law and her son again was without a wife. So she made arrangements to, for him through, uh, I think his name was Vanamali. Vanamali was the matchmaker who arranged the match between Lord Chaitanya and Vishnu Priya. But he describes in that Chaitanya Bhagwat some of the activities that the Lord performed during his time when he went to East Bengal, which is now called East Bengal. It was still part of the, the tract of India at that time. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Okay, thank you very much. We'll stop here. If there's any comments or any questions. Thank you for your lecture, Your Holiness. We have witnessed in the last days two disappearances. And I was standing in front of this um, this uh, chart um, where you are here and then the earth is shown and then uh, the ghost realm and then the higher planets. And everything becomes more subtle and subtle uh, after a ghostly uh, level. And um, today's uh, the Orthodox uh, how they say uh, when Christ rises? Easter, oh, yes. E Easter, e yes, yeah, today. And um, it feels like... The, re the resurrection? Oh, yes, the resurrection. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, the bodies, uh, you, you've, you've mentioned that um, this, the, all of these holy saints, they never really... They're, it's like with the sun. It never uh, goes away. It just comes out somewhere else. Um Lord Chaitanya Krishna has has a lot of lot of uh, his um, friends and his uh, eternal servants, and so there are in Orthodoxy there are a lot of a lot of holy saints, and their disappearances days are also um, um, very um, yeah. It's also auspicious. celebrated. Yeah, and um, they celebrate. They call it the feast. They they all they they all are are uh, um, to receive and to feel by our senses on a subtle level, as I understand, because when when the ghost uh, and the rakshas, rakshasas 
or the next ones, and then it becomes more and more subtle, and they rise and they go down in our levels and come again into our world. They're they're to perceive by our subtle senses, all of them. Yeah, but how uh, the perception comes by hearing about them, by reading about them, by glorifying them. Yeah, that's the connection. The cl the connection with a great personality is through their life and their words. So when we hear their words, when we glorify their life's activities, when we live according to the, what they taught, we connect with them. Mm -hmm. That's the connection. Yeah, just like it says on that board behind us. You see the picture of Srila Prabhupada right on that board. Prabhupada said, what is the question of separation? You are chanting Hare Krishna and I am chanting Hare Krishna. We are together on the spiritual platform. So that may not be perceivable for everyone, but actually it's a fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Material association means proximity, but when it comes to material, spiritual association, it's by connecting with the person in terms of what they lived for and what they taught. Mm -hmm. So when we connect with these great souls, because why do they come to benefit us? And when we accept what they give us and practice it in our spiritual life, then we're connecting with them in a very direct way like that. That's true about all the saints. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not that we can actually physically associate with them because they are on a different realm. Physical association or what we say, once we leave this body, if we happen to go to the same place as they are, then again, we can have that association directly. But it's still direct through their words, through their glorifications, through their life's example, everything. That's why we spend time glorifying these great souls so we can reconnect with them and also remember what they've given us and the legacy they left us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Don't try to imagine some kind of connection other than that. <laughs> the thing uh, everybody says don't try and don't but I, I wasn't even trying I'm, uh, sometimes I just I just give up by my being just myself I just concentrate up on my breath and then I receive signs on some days and I uh, test on the internet what is today and then I realize this is not and um, this is not a coincidence so well, that's, one who is well, through prayer i mean we we are all in, in close circumstances of... practicing spirituality it is very very normal actually that we perceive and that we uh, get their signs this is something yeah, so usual but it's done through their instructions it's done through their instructions even we understand that even when they are physically present High, the highest form of association is through instructions. It's even higher than personal association. One is called Vani and the other one is called Vapu. If you really want to connect with these persons, it's through their, through their activities, their instructions. That's the connection. And when you start to realize what they've given you, then that connection becomes more and more stronger. I feel like they're hand, uh, acting without our our wanting, out of their love and out of their yeah. They're very compassionate. Compassion, yes, yes, like that. Without That's that, we want. One of the qualities of a great saint is they're always compassionate to the fallen souls. Yes, compassion means they want to give what they have to us to raise us up. If you have something that's helping you and is benefiting you. You immediately think, I want to share with someone else so they can also benefit. And that's why in, I'll use the Christian tradition since you brought it up. Um, 
the second commandment is to love the first commandment is to love god with all your heart with all your soul and all your might and the second commandment is to love your brother as yourself so what does that mean to love your brother as yourself well the understanding is that whatever you find beneficial in your life that has brought you closer to god share it with others that's what it means <laughs> If I have something that's making me happy, I want to make you happy by sharing it with you. And that's what it means to love others, is to give them what benefits them. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what benefits them, then it's pretty hard to develop a relationship. But when you know, then you give that. So we know one thing, the great souls are always giving uh, the mercy of the Lord through their own devotion. Because they're so close to the Lord, they can give the Lord. They can give the mercy of the Lord. So that's what we can receive. And, that's, and when they see that, when they see you receiving that, they become completely satisfied. Then they feel what we say, yeah, that uh, whatever they actually came for is actually being, is actually be, actually happening. In other words, what makes the spiritual, the great spiritual persons happy, is that if you accept what they give, they become benefited. They're not so much happy simply by, I mean, they are. If you glorify them, that's for your benefit. But well, real glorification is to accept their words and make that your life's example. That's what it means to connect with these persons. And that body is eternal. It's not, it's not something that's broken by time. So that's why it says one who makes these the, the words of the spiritual master, their life and soul. Yasya Devi para bhaktir tata Devi tata guru tasyaita patite karta karta di prakasanap namahatmanaha. One who has implicit faith. Implicit faith, not faith. Faith is one thing, but implicit means not broken in any situation. In both the Lord and the spiritual master. All the imports of all Vedic knowledge is automatically revealed to the devotee. In other words, they have understood everything if they have complete faith and dedication to the on the words of the Lord and His spiritual and His representative, the spiritual master. There's nowhere else to go. Right there, just go right there. Take those words and make them your life and soul. Then you're connecting with these persons directly. And that is the fact. You will experience that the more you, deeper you go into their own, their, their teachings and their words. That's why just to hear the words of the spiritual master is only the beginning of connection with the spiritual master. We have to not only hear, we have to relish them as our, our everything and live according to those words and make those words and make anything that doesn't fit into that category simply so we reject that. As Prabhupada says, we have Krishna and whatever we, he says, that is all we need. <laughs> we don't care about what everybody else is saying. We know what, we, we, we take the words of Krishna as our life and soul. So the words of the saints and the words of the great, you know, holy men, they are also the words of the Lord. <laughs> Not different. And then you're connected. Guaranteed. Then you're connected.
Um, I'd ask, I'd like to ask a follow up on that um, answer of yours. Uh, uh, since uh, Śrīla Prabhupāda also recognized some um, saints from other traditions, for example, the Christian tradition, to be devotees. For example, the Francis of Assisi, he commented on his devotion and his seeing everything as part of God, like brother, uh, brother, dog, and sister tree. Yeah, right. And Prabhupāda said, he said, yeah, he, that is real God consciousness. Yes. That's the exact words he said about St. Francis. Yes. And my question is, uh, if one, if I, for example, want to connect with God through multiple traditions at a time, hmm. uh, for example, taking instructions from saints uh, from, from both the Christian tradition, Muslim tradition, and any other tradition at the same time, but you can only follow the path of one tradition. You can hear these these saintly words, and they may give you some enlightenment. But if you really want to make advancement, you have to stay chaste to your path. Otherwise, you might find yourself... Because they also teach the process of bhakti in different ways. But their words of wisdom, we can appreciate and also benefit from. But when it comes to their w teachings on how to execute bhakti, we have to stay chaste to our, our spiritual teachers. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason that it is so because we can see the same principles um, of devotion to God, right. expressing in uh, most traditions, most the greatest traditions, for example, Christianity, Islam, they all. Yeah, you can find you know truth any truth is there. When it comes to the the truth, yeah, but when it comes to the practice, that's the point I want to make. That you have to divide that. You can only you can take their words, but and but you should also keep the words of your spiritual master and your tradition foremost, because that's where you'll find the most inspiration from. Although you get inspired by others also. And, you know, gurus are like doctors. Mm -hmm. They're all doctors. But the prescription for the patient might be slightly different. <laughs> you have to take the prescription that your doctor gives you. Hmm. It's okay. That's clear. It's important to understand that. And the life of St. Francis is wonderful. Uh, what is it called? Flowers? What was that book called? Something Flowers. It's the name of a... Uh, I read about two biographies of St. Francis. There's one biography which was really, really, really amazing. I forgot the name of it. But there's another one that's the famous one, Something Flowers. And there was a beautiful movie on the life of St. Francis. And I actually visited Assisi and met some of the, the uh, what is it, the brothers there. We met one brother, forgot his name, Brother Michael, I think his name was. And uh, I think they're Dominicans, right? No, I'm not sure. Huh? Franciscans, that's right, yeah. The Franciscans. So we spent time. We actually went through all the, many of the places where St. Francis prayed. Like that. I found it a really inspiring day, the whole day we spent there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that he's, you know, St. Francis was 
obviously a really, really great personality. Mm -hmm. So you find great personalities in all traditions. Mm -hmm. But we have, we should neglect our tradition just to go and see what's in the other traditions. Because <laughs> you'll find that, you know, just like today we're celebrating the disappearance of Vrindavan Das Thakur, our calendar is full with appearance and disappearance days of the great souls and appearance days of the Lord also. So we have a, you know, in a couple more days, there'll be another person that we can speak about. To glorify these persons means to glorify the Lord. None different. Okay, so, anything else? Okay, we can end here. Okay, Sri Vrindavan Das Thakur Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.